probably wondering why we are starting the year on Unit 7A. A good question. Your memory plays a vital role in your success not only in this class, but also on the AP test in May. If you start the year learning good memory techniques, it will make the class a whole lot easier for you. Now that we've got that out of the way, what exactly is memory anyway? The psychological definition of memory is the persistence of learning over time through the storage and retrieval of information. You might want to remember that for future reference. I can see it being on your next vocab test or even on future, future tests throughout the year. One of the first things we will look at when we discuss memory is recall versus recognition. Now recall is a measure of memory in which the person must retrieve information that they have learned earlier. For example, like on a fill in the blank test. Recognition, on the other hand, is a measure of memory in which the person need only to identify items previously learned, like on a multiple choice test. The memory process occurs in, in a three step process encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encoding is the processing of information into the memory systems, for example, by extracting meaning. Storage is the retention of encoded information over time. Finally, retrieval is the process of getting information out of memory storage. Okay, next we will look at sensory memory. Sensory memory is the immediate, very brief, recording of sensory information into the memory system. Iconic memory is a momentary sensory memory of visual stimuli, a photographic or picture image lasting no more than a few tenths of a second. The first modern study of iconic memory was performed by George Sperling in 1960. Sperling asked participants in one group to look at a blank screen onto which he flashed very briefly about one twentieth of a second, three rows of four letters each. When he asked the, the participants to recall as many letters as possible, most participants named the first four to five letters. Sperling interpreted this finding to mean that each participant had stored an image of the entire set of letters, but that by the time they began to read the second row of their mental image, it had disappeared. Echoic memory is a momentary sensory memory of the auditory stimuli. If attention is placed elsewhere, sounds and words can still be recalled within three to four seconds. Pop quiz. Why is your phone number seven digits and your social security number nine digits? I'm waiting. If you said it's because of your short term memory, you are correct. If you said something else, you should be ashamed of yourself and be thankful you're viewing this in the privacy of your own home. Here is the lowdown on short-term memory. Short-term memory holds a few items briefly, such as the aforementioned telephone number, while dialing before the information is either stored or forgotten forever. There are ways to transfer short-term memory into long-term memory. One way is by chunking which is to say organizing items into familiar, manageable units, like a phone number. Mnemonic devices are also memory aids, especially the ones that use vivid imagery and organizational devices. For example, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And lastly, rehearsal, which is the conscious repetition of info, either to maintain it in consciousness or encode it for storage. For example, like when you get a phone, somebody gives you their phone number, you don't have anything to write it down, you need to make a phone call real quick. So you remember, you keep repeating that phone number over and over until it goes from short-term memory into your long-term memory. Now, long-term memory is the relatively permanent and limitless storehouse of the memory system. Your long-term memory includes all of your knowledge, skills, and experiences throughout all of your life. There are recent studies that say that you do not forget anything that is put in your long-term memory. Explicit memory is the memory of facts and experiences that you can consciously know and declare. 
For example, I know that even numbers end with the digits 2, 4, 6, and 8. Implicit memory is the retention independent of consciousness recollection. In other words, I know how to pronounce and comprehend new vocabulary words. Explicit memory can also be divided into two parts, episodic and semantic. Episodic memory involves the recollection of specific events, situations, and experiences. For example, your first kiss or your first day of high school. Semantic memory includes things that are common knowledge, such as the name of colors, the sounds of letters and capitals of countries, and other basic facts acquired over a lifetime. Not to be outdone, though, is implicit memory, which can also be divided into two parts, procedural and conditioned. Procedural memory is the memory of how to perform different acts and skills. Essentially, it is the memory of how to do certain things. For example, like riding a bike or tying your shoes. The old adage is correct. Once you learn how to ride a bike, you'll never forget it. Conditioned memories deals with memories that are being tied to a stimulus. Um, for example, the Pavlov experiment with Pavlov's dog and salivation. Okay, try this with someone at home. Have someone take out a piece of paper and write down all the presidents of the United States that they can remember. What you will get out of this experiment is how people encode information. The primacy effect is the tendency for the first items presented in a series to be remembered better. That's why most people can get Washington, Adams, and Jefferson because of the first presidents in that, in that order. The recency effect explains why most recently presented items or experiences that are at the end of a list, for example, Bush, Obama, and Clinton, that's why they will be remembered more using the recency effect. Finally, the serial positioning effect is the tendency to recall information that is presented first and last, but not so much in the middle. That's why most people can remember George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, and George W. Bush, but not people like Chester A. Arthur and Millard Fillmore. Well, except for history geeks. The spacing effect states that we learn material more effectively and easily when we study it several times spaced out over a longer time span, rather than trying to learn it all in a very short period of time. In other words, just say no to cramming. Are you beginning to figure out why we're starting with this chapter yet? Now, visual encoding refers to the process by which we remember visual images. For example, if you are presented a list of words, each shown for one second, you will be able to remember if there was a word that was written in all capital letters or if there was a word written in italics. Acoustic encoding is the process of remembering and comprehending something that you hear. Repetition of words or putting information into a song or rhythm uses acoustic encoding. Semantic encoding is a specific type of encoding in which the meaning of something, a word, a phrase, picture, event, whatever, is encoded as opposed to the sound or vision of it. A good example of semantic encoding is when you put a vocabulary word into your own words or when you actually teach a topic to someone. If you ask someone, where were you on September 11th, 2001, they wouldn't be using their flashbulb memory. Flashbulb memory is a clear memory of an emotionally significant moment or an event. A mood congruent memory indicates that when humans store memories, they not only store the event, but they also store the memory of the mood that they were in, uh, in at the time. For this reason, when we feel happy, we recall our happy memories. Without looking in your pockets, which penny is correct? Retroactive interference. Basically what this means is new information blocks out old information. 
information like getting a new bus number and forgetting the old bus number. Proactive interference is basically old information blocks out new information, which is kind of like calling your new girlfriend by your old girlfriend's name. Trust me, on the last one, that doesn't end well. Even after 10 years, that doesn't end well. You still hear about it. And that's a wrap on memory. Remember, one of the great things about having this lecture in this format is that you can play it over and over again until you have placed this info securely into your long-term memory.